Hey you guys, it's Peter, and welcome to my channel, Peter Likes Books. And yes, this is a book vlog. And I am just leaving Dunkin' Donuts, where I did a review of the pumpkin cream cold brew. Mmm, delicioso. And um, I am getting ready to go do this thing that I have to do on Fridays, it's recovery commitment and I need to get gas, but I thought I would vlog for a little bit while I was driving. So, I just finished a book last night, so I thought that gives me a good opportunity to uh, talk. And can I not turn this way? What's the story here? I guess I can't turn that way. Um, oh, except that car turned that way, so maybe I could have. I don't know. I'll go this way for a little bit, and then I'll turn around. Um, oh, shoot. I'm going to get stuck in all kinds of traffic if I go this way. Okay, well, we'll pull through the speedway. Anyway, um, last night, I finished the audiobook for Murder... Flipped for Murder, I can never remember the title of it, by Maddie Day, it's a cozy mystery, and it is about a woman named Robbie Jordan, and she's 27, although most of the book I thought she was 50. <laughs> Not that it really matters, but um, when she said she was 27, I was kind of like, oh my God, really? So anyway, and she returns, well, she's never really lived there before. Um, the book takes place in Southern Indiana. I'm from Indiana. And so it takes place by Bloomington, Indiana, um, which is where Indiana University is. It takes place um, in a city called South Lick, which is actually uh, a made up town. But I think she may have based it kind of off of French Lick, which is a city in Indianapolis. And it's actually famous. It's West Baden is close to it. And it's famous for I'm um, having great spas, and there's also casinos down there that a lot of people go to, and it's beautiful. Um, so anyway, but the city that she creates is about 20 minutes from Nashville, Indiana, which is a small little cute town that has like fudge shops and little restaurants. And actually, what's interesting about it is several of the places that she references in the book actually exist. Like some of the places in Nashville that she talks about exist. She talks about this bar in Bloomington, Indiana called Nick's that is like really, really famous. Um, so anyway, she, her mother has passed away. Her mother moved from this town uh, a year before Robbie was born. I have to turn on my, or put on my sunglasses, I'm sorry. Um, but Robbie would go there every summer to spend time with her aunt. And um, so she, after her mother passes away, she lives in California. She moves back to or she moves to South Lick, and she's been there for three years, and she's just opened a restaurant slash antique cookware store called pa Pancakes and Pans. And the day after she opens, or the, the night that she opens, this woman in town gets murdered, and um, they stuff one of her famous cheddar, the murderer stuffs up one of her famous cheddar biscuits in her mouth. <laughs> this is why I love these cozy mysteries. So then they think that it's her. So the book has a little romance. It has a lot of mystery. Um, I have to tell you that I did not love the narrator on this book. Um, but by the end of the book, I was like, okay, I'm like used to the narrator now that I can listen to the whole series. Like the narrator now sounds like the main character to me. But I was talking about this on my vlog last night. Like I really do believe that a narrator makes or breaks an audiobook. Like depending on who the, the narrator is. And you can have the greatest narrator in the entire world. Cause I've, I, there are some narrators that I love, but then I've heard them narrate a book and I'm like, yeah, your voice doesn't match this book. So it, it, I think it depends on that a lot. Um, like the Cassandra, like Cassandra Campbell, who narrates all of the Misfortune books by Janet DeLeon, she, like her voice matches, um, no, I don't need my sunglasses as much. Well, I'll just keep them on. Matches uh, Fortune Reading so much. This one, the narrator, like, honest to God, and it was a lot of the language that was written in the book too, and the things that she says. You know, in Cozy Mysteries, they don't cuss. There's never anything like, there's no explicit like intimacy. So, you know, 
you know that going into it. But I've also read um, Cozy Mysteries where they kind of allude to that a little bit. And they do, you know, one of the things that's interesting to me about that is that in Cozy Mysteries, like, one of the things I'm starting to get more and more and more is that they do like their liquor, though, in Cozy Mysteries. <laughs> like, they're, like, beer was referenced a lot in this book and, ref and like, IPAs and wine and all this kind of stuff. It was good. It was a really good book. Like, I... If I'm getting ready to go to Las Vegas and um, for our anniversary, and I like to read books where I'm going to be. Like, so when I go to Miami, I like to read books about Miami, which is why I've been reading the Dexter books down there. And so when, um, and that's actually how I read the oh shoot, the first one I can't, the girl beneath the sea. Andrew Maine, I think, wrote that. And then the second one's called Black Coral. And both of them take place in Fort Lauderdale. And so I read those when I was in. I think Black Coral I read here, actually, because I couldn't wait until we got down there. But, um... So, I wanted to read something about Las Vegas while I was in Las Vegas or getting ready to go to Las Vegas. So I want, didn't want to turn around and read another cozy mystery that takes place in the fall and winter in Indiana. You know what I mean? <laughs> So anyway, I gave the book four out of five stars. You know, it was such an enjoyable read. I would have given it five out of five stars, except for that, like, it's not one of the greatest books I've ever read. Um, but it was super enjoyable. I'm gonna continue with the series. I love the series. I would highly recommend it if you like cozies. Um, Maddie Day, D-A-Y, is the author, and it's, I think they're called the Southlick series. It's called the Southlick series. Um, but the first one is called Flipped for Murder. Yeah, they were, and she's got, a, I think, two or three series out. And it was cute. It was really cute. And I really enjoyed it. Um, I wouldn't say that the mystery was super deep. I kind of knew the mystery from the very beginning. But the book really wasn't, like, the mystery was kind of like the back story to it. I will say it was kind of a little scary in some parts because, um, I mean, somebody was trying to get her. So, you know, there's that. But. I mean, not scared like I was terrified, but scared like, it was scary like, kind of like, she was in her apartment, her apartment's in the back or on the top of the restaurant, and she would be like in her apartment, she, I think it's into the back, and she would hear somebody like in the restaurant, and then she'd like go out and look, and anyway, so that's that, I'm trying to pick, well, actually, I was driving around thinking about what I want my September book to be for Peter's Book Club, and I think I just figured it out. It's a book that I already have on Audible. It just came out recently, and um, I'm gonna make it my September book, and I'm real excited about it. But I gotta buy a copy of it, <laughs> so that's first things first. Um, so I can put it on my Instagram and all that. Then, what was the other thing I wanted to say? Oh, I was, I do this for every trip I go on, and I always have a real difficult time finding books that take places, or take place in the city that I'm going to. You know, you would think, like, from Miami and Las Vegas, there'd be nine million books that have been written there, like thrillers and stuff, right? Not many. <coughs> so, I googled last night books and movies that take place in Las Vegas. I actually think because I'm real excited about this trip. I actually think on the way out there, I just bought, I've been like buying a lot of my favorite movies um, to just like keep in my iTunes store, you know, iTunes library so that I have them because sometimes they go on sale. I can't remember what I bought yesterday that was super cheap. It was like less than $6, so I bought it. I can't remember what it was. But whenever they're real cheap like that, if it's something that I want, I'll buy them. Because I have to tell you what's interesting is I have been looking for certain movies lately and like you can't buy them or rent them anywhere and I'm like you have to like get on eBay and buy like the DVD or find the DVD somewhere. What was I looking for last night that I couldn't believe that they didn't have? Oh, I was looking through all of these Las Vegas movies. What was the Las Vegas movie that they didn't have? I couldn't believe it. Um, Leaving Las Vegas is actually on Amazon Prime. It's a fantastic movie, but it's, it's very, very sad. Um. I just bought Ocean's 11 and Ocean's 13. I know Ocean's 12 takes place in Europe, so I just wanted the, the, the Vegas ones. 
And then I also bought Miss Congeniality 1 and 2, which I think 2 is the only one that takes, takes place in Las Vegas. I think they maybe both take, that one I don't remember. Anyway, I love those Miss Congeniality movies. So I got those. Actually, I watched one of the Miss Congeniality movies when I was in Las Vegas, like, at the second one, like years and years and years ago. And that was really fun to watch while I was there. So then I was trying to find a book and there just are no good books that like are, uh, there really aren't that many that are set in Las Vegas. Years ago, I had read Void Moon by Michael Connelly. Michael Con I said the same thing the other day on my vlog. Michael Connelly, who writes the Harry Bush, the Harry Bo <laughs> Woo, talk about family friendly. Who writes the Harry Bosch books. <laughs> anyway. So, <laughs> I loved it. It was a standalone. My uncle loved the Harry Bosch books, but I just haven't ever gotten into them. I guess I should try one one of these times. Um, I do really like Michael Connelly's writing. I keep on saying that. Michael Connelly's writing. Um, a, two years ago, I think, I read The Midnight Something, and that was really good. I think there was a sequel to that. I should actually get the sequel. Maybe I did buy the sequel to that. Um, but that was really good. But anyway, so I down. I had already downloaded Void Moon like a couple years ago because I had done. I wanted to do this thing on my BookTube channel, which I did, which was like uh, it was called like grocery store books. And like every month, I would pick like two books that you can like get in the grocery store. You know, like back in the day, the James Patterson, Daniel Steele's, Jackie Collins, Michael Connelly, David Baldacci, like all of that. Those kind of like thriller kind of romance, Nora Roberts, all that stuff. You know, you always see at the grocery store. So every month, I was just going to pick two of those and have it be like grocery store reads. Would you guys enjoy if I did that again? I'm reading more now, so I actually could do that. So let me know if you'd be interested in that. But, um, so, because I loved Void Moon so much before. By the way, speaking of that, if you like those kind of books, one of the most, and I don't remember this book and I should reread it, but I always recommend it to people. One of the best books I ever read was The Winner by David Baldacci. I actually should download that for this trip and reread that since I'm doing another reread because I don't remember reading it. I mean, I remember reading it, but I don't remember anything that it's about. So, anyway, it's about a lottery winner. Um, so... But I, um, so I love the book Void Moon, but I hadn't read it in so long. So I was like, okay, I'm going to read Void Moon going into Las Vegas because I know the whole thing takes place in Las Vegas. I remember that. So I started that last night. I'm about a half an hour into it right now. Um, it's like 10 hour, or 10, it's like almost 11 hours. It's 10 hours and 59 minutes long. Um, I always know the exact minutes of an audi uh, audible book because I look so much like when I'm driving and I'm listening to it, I look and see like, you know, how long it is. So, yeah, and then I don't know another book. I was like, there literally are no good books set in Las Vegas. I mean, there were, I mean, the series that there are are from like years ago. There's one by, I don't know what the guy's name is, but this, the, the fourth one in the series is called Loaded Dice. And I don't remember what the first one's called. I screenshot it last night. Um, but there's four or five books in the series. It's about this private investigator. But I don't know if they all take place in Las Vegas. <clears throat> and I don't want to read one there if I'm there. And it's, you know what I mean? So if you guys have any good books... Any good recommendations for Vegas books? I would love to hear it. Love to hear it because I can't find any good books in Las Vegas. Somebody recommended me um, a series that is by a woman and it has three books in it too. So they said that on my vlog. I saw that earlier today. So I'm going to look into that and um, see what that series is about. <clears throat> There's actually a couple cozy mystery series that are... Um, centered in Las Vegas. I thought that might be kind of fun to read a cozy mystery series while I was in Las Vegas. You know, like, that's based there. By the way, the food that she mentions in Flipped for Murder, it is the best cozy mystery food that I have ever... Well, she owns a restaurant, so every day she's talking about what she's putting on the menu. But even, like, more than that, like, this one time she's like... She goes... I put uh, I cut up a tomato 
and put large chunks of mozzarella and put it on sourdough bread and sat and I thought, oh my God, that sounds so good with maybe a little mayonnaise on there. I was like, oh my God, that sounds delicious. And um, like she goes to her aunt's house and they're having a, like homemade apple cider, like mold cider with like all kinds of like homemade bread and stuff. Speaking of which. I have my donut from Dunkin' Donuts. But don't be jealous. There goes my bikini body for Vegas. <laughs> anyway. I highly, highly recommend Flip for Murder. And if you have any suggestions for Las Vegas, thrillers or mysteries. I don't want a drama set in Las Vegas. I want like a mystery or a thriller. Let me know in the comment section below. And I love you guys. I will be announcing the September book. I'll probably do it when I get back. And um, I love you guys and I will see you real soon. Love you. Bye.